cryptocurrencies were invented and once they were invented they're not going anywhere they are a significant invention uh, i think eventually uh, cryptocurrencies will be recognized as probably the most important invention in economics and technology in the 21st century since the introduction of the internet so uh, cryptocurrencies i would call uh, in general currencies that uh, depend on their operation on cryptographic primitives and uh, a common understanding of how the software works. Bitcoin is a very special type of cryptocurrency uh, in that it is the first cryptocurrency that is based on a distributed proof-of-work principle uh, that is captured in a distributed database called a blockchain. <coughs> the concept of distributed proof-of-work is what makes Bitcoin special. Bitcoin is based on a simple invention and the word simple is used ironically in that sentence or rather sarcastically. Uh, it's a simple invention created in 2008 by Satoshi Nakamoto and what it does is it allows you to build a fully distributed system that exhibits principles of trust without a central authority, without a third party in between all of the transactions. A Bitcoin transaction is a signed data structure that can be executed anywhere in the world. Now, a lot of people think that a Bitcoin transaction has to be transmitted on the Bitcoin network. And that's not true. A Bitcoin transaction has to reach the miners and be included in a block. But it doesn't need to be transmitted over the Bitcoin network. There's nothing special about the Bitcoin network. It just forwards transactions and blocks. It can be transmitted over any form of communication medium. It doesn't care if the Bitcoin address is the address of a multimillionaire, the address of a central bank, the address of a smart contract, the address of a device, or the address of a human. It doesn't know. It doesn't care if the transaction is carrying lots of money or not so much money at all. It doesn't care if the address is in Kuala Lumpur or downtown New York. It doesn't know. It doesn't care. It moves money from one address to another based on a simple locking script. And that means that if you want to build a new application on top of Bitcoin, you can upgrade the end devices and you can build an application. And you don't need to ask for anyone's permission to innovate. Write the app, launch it on your endpoint, and Bitcoin will route it. Now the authority is not derived from the sovereignty of the issuer, from the printing press of a nation state, that can declare through monopoly and use of force that this is the currency you will use. Now we can choose currency. My primary motivation for Bitcoin, which I've made into a slogan, is the other six and a half billion. That's why Bitcoin is important to me. It's because of the seven and a half billion people on this planet, only one billion people have access to banking facilities, banking services, credit, uh, checking capabilities, or any ability to send and receive money internationally. That's not by accident. And it's not because they don't have money, and it's not because they don't have productive capacity. It's because of politics and infrastructure. And my reason for being interested in Bitcoin is because I think Bitcoin can change that. Because simply with the introduction of not even a very smart smartphone, um, you can introduce banking services throughout the world. And you don't even need connectivity or 24-hour electricity to do so. Where did this thing come from? How do you build, in four years, the fastest hashing supercomputer on the planet? Com completely without anyone noticing. Because I mean, honestly, most of the world, you think, outside of this room, how many people on the MIT campus know that the fastest supercomputer in the world, if you allow for hashing, is the Bitcoin network? And it's not just fast, it's thousands of times faster than all of the top supercomputers put together. And in 2014, during the worst year of Bitcoin, 500 startups received $500 million in investment generating tens of thousands of jobs, and none of that innovation has come back yet because they just started. Give us two years. All of the incredible technology advancements we saw in 2014 happened
from inventions that were done two years ago and just started reaching broad adoption. Now what happens when you throw 500 companies and 10,000 developers at the problem? Give me two years and you will see some pretty amazing things in Bitcoin. Bitcoin could very much collapse in value. What I can guarantee for you, no one can confiscate your Bitcoin. No one can steal your Bitcoin. No one can bail in your Bitcoin. No one can bail out your Bitcoin. Right? No one can seize your Bitcoin, or forfeit your Bitcoin, or inflate it into paper money. I think a lot of the people in Bitcoin have a very palpable sense that they are participating in history. This stuff has never happened. We've never had a currency that can enable distributed consensus without a third party. We've never had a successful digital currency that doesn't have a sovereign actor behind it. We've never had a currency that can be instantly transmitted across borders without controls. You know, two years ago they were saying this is all a complete joke. It's all just a whole pile of BS. It's a Ponzi scheme. It's a crazy libertarian dream. And of course that message started becoming less and less credible as this little relentless anomaly of technology refused to die. So while journalists are writing yet another obituary for the death of Bitcoin, I look at an ecosystem of openness. I look at an ecosystem that is generating jobs in an economy that is mostly dead. I'm looking at an ecosystem that has some of the smartest people I have ever met creating the most amazing innovations. And the really amazing thing about this is that we all benefit from all of this. We're not really competing against each other. When one Bitcoin company builds something amazing, everybody gets the benefit. Bitcoin gets better for everybody.